Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today we're taking a look at the 2014 Honda Civic. This particular model is the Civic EX. If you're wondering why I'm taking a look at the Civic so soon, after all we just took a look at one last year, the reason is because the Civic was completely redesigned in 2012, got a significant refresh for 2013, and has yet again received another significant refresh for the 2014 model year. Although it is unusual for any car to receive so many significant updates back to back, it's not that unexpected in the compact sedan category because there's so many entries in this segment and it is so competitive. Because of the sheer number of competitors in this segment, I'm only going to be talking about the five high volume competitors that compete directly with this Honda Civic. The Honda Civic is number two in the segment, just behind the Toyota Corolla. We then have the Chevy Cruze, the Ford Focus, the Hyundai Elantra, as well as the Nissan Sentra. Up front, not a whole lot's changed for the Honda Civic sedan. That means we still have this fairly conservative Honda styling going on up front. I think it's overall fairly attractive, but it's not quite as attractive as the larger Honda Accord. Now the Civic Coupe gets an entirely different front end. It's relatively unique and it reminds me a great deal of what would happen if you merged a Honda and a Volkswagen together. I think it's an attractive and aggressive and also a little bit more grown up look than's going on right here in the sedan. Although we haven't heard any rumors about this, I do hope that Honda considers installing that brand new front end on the coupe on certain versions of the sedan at least in the 2015 model year, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. The side profile of the Civic also remains relatively unchanged for the 2014 model year, at least here on the sedan. We do get a few changes with the coupe, and that's mostly because the front end and the rear end are slightly different for the 2014 coupe. We do get refreshed wheels that are more attractive than the outgoing 2013 wheels, and right over here on this side view mirror, we have Honda's new lane watch system that's migrated down from the Accord onto this Honda Civic. Although the overall proportions of the Civic are a little bit more coupe-like than you'll find in the Honda Accord, Honda's family-oriented mission is still very obvious when you take a look at the Civic. So we have this relatively large greenhouse, somewhat low belt line compared to some of those other entries in the segment, and this extra piece of glass right here in the rear door that helps rear passengers see out of the back. It also really improves rearward visibility for the driver. Coupe-like profile continues back here with a fairly long rear glass, as well as a fairly short trunk lid. Part of the reason for the 2013 emergency Civic refresh is right back here in the tail lamp modules because the 2012 model had tail lamp modules that did not extend onto the trunk lid of the Civic and apparently owners and shoppers thought that that looked just a little bit too cheap. So for 2013 they extended this tail lamp module onto the trunk they also darked it out just a little bit and overall it's much more attractive than the 2012 model. Now the 2014 model of the Civic Coupe gets an entirely different back end than the 2014 sedan. I do think that that coupe styling is again a little bit more attractive and a little bit more aggressive than the sedans and I hope that Honda manages to merge just a little bit of that into the Civic over the coming years. We have an essentially hidden exhaust tip on the Civic but we have a little lower trim right here to help keep things looking just a little bit less economy in the back of the Civic. Most Civics on dealer lots have this 1.8 liter four cylinder engine under the hood. It produces 143 horsepower and 129 pound feet of torque. In the Civic LX model, this is mated to a five-speed manual transmission by default, but you can opt for a continuously variable transmission or CVT. That CVT is standard on EX models and above. The Civic CVT is very closely related to the Accord's brand new CVT, and it behaves somewhat differently than Toyota and Nissan's CVTs. This particular transmission can change ratios much faster than the Nissan or Toyota units, and it feels just a little bit more engaging out on the road. As before, there is a 1.8 liter natural gas four-cylinder engine available. It produces 110 horsepower and 109 pound-feet of torque, and it's mated only to the same old five-speed automatic that we got last year. There is still a 1.5 liter hybrid model. It produces 110 horsepower and 127 pound-feet of torque, and it's mated to a CVT transmission as well. Honda will still sell you the Civic Si if you need more power, and that uses a 2.4 liter four-cylinder engine, produces 205 horsepower and 174 pound-feet of torque. That particular engine is mated only to a six-speed manual transmission. There's no automatic transmission SI at this point. Before we move on, I'd like to point out the hood in the Honda Civic because the hood will open in two different positions. It will open in this nearly vertical position and a more traditional reclined position. It makes it an awful lot easier to work under the hood of the Honda Civic. This is something that Honda likes to do in their models and it's something that's relatively unique to Honda and Mercedes. During your week with the Civic EX, I found front seat comfort to be very good. We don't have adjustable lumbar support in the Civic, but it does have fairly aggressive lumbar support in its basic form. You may or may not like that, so you do want to spend a decent amount of time in these seats before you decide to buy the car like you should in any car. We get a tilt telescoping steering column, and we have a multi-way manually adjustable seat. This adjusts for height, just for tilt of the seat back, and you can go forward and backward with this lever on the seat bottom right there. If you want a multi-way power seat, that's only available in the EXL and above. 
The Civic's rear seat comfort scores about an 8 out of 10 in this particular category. We have a decent amount of rear legroom, even though the Civic seems to score about the middle of the pack in terms of rear legroom. In reality, it seems to be towards the upper end of this particular segment. Some of that has to do with the way that various manufacturers record rear seat legroom. There's not a particular standard, so you should jam just about everybody that you can think of in a car when you're test driving it. Don't test drive your car alone. Take your family, your friends, whoever you think may be in the car regularly with you. Put them all in the car and see how well everybody fits with themselves. Because in the Civic, we actually seem to have a little bit more legroom than those numbers would indicate. If I move over to the right side of the Civic, this front seat is all the way back in its track. I have about an inch and a half of legroom left right there. You will find a little bit more room in the Corolla as well as the Sentra, especially the Sentra because the Sentra has a pretty large back seat. Rear seat passengers will find a fold down center armrest with two cup holders, as well as a 60-40 split folding rear seat back. And the rear folding seat back controls are in the trunk, so you do have to open the trunk, pull the lever in order to fold down the seat flat. When it comes to cargo hauling, the Civic's trunk is just a little bit smaller than you'll find in some of the competition, most notably the Nissan Sentra. The Nissan Sentra has an interesting trick up its sleeve. This is the largest roller bag you can carry in a domestic flight, and while you can fit quite a number of these in the trunk in the Honda Civic, in the Sentra you can fit a decent number more because of how you can put them in the trunk. You can actually put them in the Sentra's trunk in this upright pose right here, and you can close the trunk lid, which is not something you can do in the Honda Civic. As a result, you can fit about two to three more of these sized roller bags in a Nissan Sentra than you can in the Honda Civic. Overall, the Civic scores seven out of 10 points in our exclusive trunk comfort index. We lose a few points for having this trunk just a little bit smaller than the leading competitors in this compact category. We lose some additional points for not having a trunk handle to help you close the trunk lid. Let's take a quick spin around the interior before we go out on the road. Our EX model has this standard moonroof, as you can see right there. We also have height adjustable seat belts for the driver as well as the front passenger. The 2013 refresh bought these improved door panels with faux stitching going on and 2014 improves the fabric that you'll find on the door as well as on the seat cushions. The 2013 refresh also replaced the grass paper finished injection molded plastics with these soft touch injection molded plastics on the dashboard. We also get the same faux stitching over here. We get a reasonably sized glove box. We weren't able to stick a large tablet computer in here, but it is relatively large for this class. The big change on the interior for 2014 is this brand new 7 inch LCD infotainment system. It uses a touch screen and operates very much like a tablet or smartphone that you may be used to. If you want to know more about this brand new 7 inch LCD infotainment system, then go ahead and click that link at the bottom of your screen. We'll be taken over to our infotainment video for more on this particular system. Down here we have our single zone climate control that's standard on the EX model and above. Below that we have a brand new HDMI input for that 7 inch screen, USB input right there. On the other side, we have a power outlet. Between the climate controls and these inputs down here, we have an additional little storage cubby. You can fit a wallet or a cell phone or some other similarly sized item right in there. We have a very traditional shifter right there on the center console, along with two very large cup holders. One nice change for this year is that we also have an additional USB input right here in the center console cubby so that way you can hide your iPod or your phone or whatever it is you want to hide right there in the center console. You can see from this angle that Honda is still using their bi-level dash concept. If we move over to the driver's side, you can see what's going on here. Honda chooses to put the speedometer as well as more critical information up there so it's a little bit closer to the eye line of the driver, so it's a little bit less distracting. They put the tachometer right down here where you traditionally find most gauges in a car. This particular LCD over here displays some limited infotainment information. We also get a clock, vehicle messages, as well as fuel economy. You can also turn that screen off right there. Moving over, you can see we have an instantaneous miles per gallon display, digital speedometer. These little bars here change depending on how economically you're driving. Since we're parked right now, they're blue. It can also change to purple and green. And then we have our digital fuel gauge right over there. In the location where most cars gauges live, we have our eco indicator, tachometer, cruise control indicator, as well as the transmission range selector right over there. LX and EX models get this injection molded urethane steering wheel. If you want a leather wrapped steering wheel, you have to move up to the EXL model, which contains a leather seat package as well. This particular button controls that multi-information display right up there. The menu button is how you get to the vehicle menu options in that same readout. This particular set of joystick buttons controls the radio and the dashboard, source, volume, up, down, track, forward, backward. This joystick button arrangement over here is the cruise control. Cruise control on, off, cancel, set, and resume. And then down here you'll find the voice command buttons as well as phone hang up and pick up. The first thing you'll notice about the 2014 Civic out on the road is the performance. We scored 0 to 60 in 7.68 seconds in this Civic, which is nearly a full second faster than the 2013 model year. The reason for that is not because there's any more power in the 2014 Civic. The engine hasn't changed at all. It's all down to the transmission. 
I'm really a fan of CVTs and this 2014 Honda Civic is a perfect example of why. The 2013 Honda Civic with its old 5-speed automatic felt like it never had the right ratio for me. The competition with their 6-speed automatics definitely felt better, but something like the new Nissan Sentra as well as the Toyota Corolla felt just a little bit better even though they had less power and it was all down to the CVT. Now we have the Honda Civic with the same amount of power as last year, which is a relatively good power figure for this compact sedan segment, and now we also have a CVT, which makes this now faster than most of those other entries in the segment, and really all Honda did was just change that transmission. So going from a very middling entry in terms of performance to at the top end of this pack really is a huge difference in this Honda Civic. But the news is even more important than just having a CVT under the hood because this CVT behaves differently than Nissan or Toyota CVTs. It behaves very much like the one that you find under the hood of the Honda Accord because this CVT can change ratios much faster for some reason than the Nissan or Toyota units. Now Honda really hasn't said why that is or exactly how they've managed this, but the ratio changes in this transmission are much more like a traditional automatic. So whereas a regular CVT in a Nissan Sentra or a Toyota Corolla doesn't have that same passing feel as a regular automatic because it takes so long for the engine to go from whatever high ratio it's at to a low ratio for you to pass, that by the time it's done that you're passing maneuvers over and you did it kind of slowly. With this Honda Civic CVT, it's very much like a Honda Accord. So I floor it and this engine goes right up to about 5,000 RPM or so and then you get the power for that passing maneuver. And as soon as you let off the power, the engine drops very rapidly back down to you know, about 1500 RPM or so because we're going about 45 miles an hour. That's very much like a traditional automatic transmission in that shift behavior and very different than a traditional CVT. All the traditional benefits of a CVT are still here even though we have that improved shift feel. That means we got 34 and a half miles per gallon over almost 500 miles of very mixed driving in this Honda Civic. That's two miles per gallon better than last year's five-speed automatic equipped model. That's just because this transmission doesn't have to downshift quite as far when it does need to downshift. So if you're on the freeway and you're going up a slight incline, that five-speed automatic would usually have to shift down to fourth or sometimes even third in order to go up over that. And sometimes that was just lower than the transmission really needed to go. The CVT always has the right ratio for you. The second thing is in mountain driving like we're on right now, because this transmission always has the right ratio yet again, so it feels like the car has a little bit more power than you might think. It's definitely also what's going on in the Sentra as well as the Corolla, because the Sentra doesn't really have a whole lot of power, but that CVT more than makes up for it in mountain driving. In terms of suspension tuning, the LX, EX, and EXL models of the Civic are tuned towards the softer side of the compact sedan segment. If you want something a little bit firmer, then you're going to need to shop for something like a Mazda 3 or Honda's Civic Si. The Civic's handling abilities can be described as very middle of the road, very much like the suspension tuning. So this is going to handle a little bit better out on the road, it's going to feel a little bit better out on the road than something like a Hyundai Elantra, but it's not going to feel as engaging as a Civic Si or a Mazda 3. Honda has done a decent amount of work on sound deadening in this cabin, so we scored 72 decibels at 50 miles an hour during my week with this car, and that is a few decibels lower than the Toyota Corolla, however it's not as quiet as certain versions of the Mazda 3 out on the road. The Civic scored very well in my braking fade resistance tests, and there's a decent amount of steering feel behind the wheel even though we have electric power steering in this car. Even though I think this bi-level dashboard is a little bit peculiar looking, it definitely serves the purpose that Honda designed it for. By having that speedometer up high and a little bit closer to the road, it does keep your eyes more on the road and it leads to a little bit less driver distraction while driving the car. I also appreciate having that multi-information display on the right of that speedometer so you can see the tracks and your fuel economy, etc. without having to look down at the screen in the dashboard. EX and EXL models get Honda's lane watch system moved down from the Honda Accord. There's a camera mounted on the side view mirror on the passenger side of the car and it's looking backwards towards my blind spot. I can activate the camera with either the turn signal or by pressing a button on the turn signal stock. And when I do, I'm going to get a view of that camera on this 7 inch touch screen right here in the dashboard. Well, I still think the system is slightly gimmicky because I can get very much the same view by turning my head thusly. And I can see over there on my blind spot if I have my mirrors properly adjusted as well. I could see if you had limited neck mobility, this could be a very handy feature. In terms of driving enjoyment, the Honda Civic is a solid competitor in this segment, even though we now have this CVT under the hood. I think that the Honda Civic is more engaging than the Forte or the Elantra because the suspension is much better sorted than the Civic. The Kia and the Hyundai, they tend to get a little bit upset over rough pavement or uneven pavement sections or bumps in the road, potholes, that sort of thing, and that's not happening here in the Civic. The Mazda 3 and the Ford Focus are easily the tops in this segment, but the Honda Civic is a solid competitor. 
Pricing on the 2014 Civic is very middle of the road, and in typical Honda fashion, there are very few options to choose from. Things start out with the LX model at $18,390. If you want to add the CVT transmission to that LX, it'll be $19,190. This EX model that we're testing here is expected to be the bulk of sales, and it starts out at $21,090. The additional cash over the LX automatic transmission model buys the EX shopper, automatic headlamps, the lane watch system, the 7-inch infotainment LCD system, as well as automatic climate control, and a few other little goodies on the inside. Stepping up to the EXL for $22,740 will buy you power seats, leather, and heated seats, as well as fog lamps. And if you want navigation, that's only available in the EXL with navigation model, and that's $24,240. In addition to the navigation system, it also buys you XM satellite radio as well as HD radio. An important thing to keep in mind when shopping for your Civic is that that regular EXL model without navigation can have the navigation software with this 7-inch infotainment system. All you need is an iPhone 5 at this current moment as well as a $60 downloadable app for that iPhone and you will be able to do that. Honda does tell us that they will have an Android as well as other apps available to integrate with the car eventually, but at launch it's going to be just the iPhone shoppers that will be able to add navigation to the EX as well as the EXL models for $60 as well as that data plan on your smartphone. The Civic remains a compelling entry in this compact sedan segment, however Honda's reliability reputation and good resale value do come at a price because the Nissan Sentra, the Chevy Cruze, as well as the Hyundai Elantra are going to cost you a little bit less out the door. I think that overall the Kia Forte still remains the best value for me in this segment and the Mazda 3 is by far the best subcompact and compact car available out there on the market both in the four-door as well as the five-door versions. However, the real competition for the Civic doesn't lie on other dealers' lots. It actually lies right there on Honda's own lot because the Honda Accord LX is only $22,755 with the CVT. That's just $1,665 more than this Honda Civic. In addition to the $1,665 larger price tag on that Accord, you also will lose the moonroof that this Civic EX has, two speakers, as well as the lane watch system. However, you do gain active noise cancellation, two-zone climate control, bigger and more comfortable seats that are a little bit more adjustable, and you also get better quality fabric and carpets on the inside. In addition to that, you also get one of my favorite mid-size sedans. While the Honda Civic ranks at the upper end of the compact sedan segment, for me, the Accord is right at the top of the mid-size sedan segment, and they're really not that far apart in price. My final word on the 2014 Civic is that this is a solid entry in the compact sedan segment. When you're out shopping for your 2014 Civic, you should also cross-shop the Kia Forte, the Mazda 3, and definitely that Honda Accord. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the 2014 Honda Civic EX. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of our latest videos. I also encourage you to like this video, share this video, comment on this video, tell me what you liked and didn't like about the video, or about the Honda Civic in general. You can also find related videos at the end of this video. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash alexandautos. If you have any questions, you can email me at alex at alexandautos.com. I'll see you next week.